Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vivian and today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most controversial design trends of the decade, but also how it's shaping the entire interior design landscape of the 2020s. We're talking about postmodern. we're going to take a deep dive into everything postmodern. We're going to look at what postmodern was and what it is today. Postmodern furniture, materials, and color palettes, how to decorate postmodern, where to shop postmodern, and we'll even try to figure out if postmodern is a style for you. So postmodernism started a little earlier in architecture, but it really hit interior design in the 1970s, and it continued on until sometime in the 90s. The core idea behind postmodernism was a desire to break free from modern design, or what we all know as mid-century modern. Postmodernism celebrated everything unconventional, flashy, complex, and weird, and often prioritized form over function, which is pretty much the exact opposite of mid-century modern. It's always been a controversial movement, and now that it's coming back, a lot of people are having a knee-jerk reaction. And can you really blame them? I mean, the 70s and 80s had some pretty questionable design moments. But before you get too upset, hear me out. The postmodern that we're seeing today is actually more of a revival of the original postmodern from back then. In a nutshell, it's a combination of furniture seen in the late 70s paired with some colors and shapes that we were seeing in the 1980s. A lot of what we recognize today as the classic like 1980s aesthetic actually started with a group called the Memphis Group, which was a design collective founded in 1980 in Milan by by a designer called Ettore Sotsas. Memphis was all about bright shapes and bold colors. There were a lot of elements that almost resembled child's building blocks. Let me show you some pictures. Just by looking at these images, you can see why so many people who weren't used to seeing this sort of thing wouldn't have known what to make of it. It's pretty crazy, right? Well, believe it or not, this insane aesthetic actually had a huge influence on all of the design of the 80s and beyond. So that was then, but what exactly is happening today with postmodern? Hopefully not the same thing, right? Right. Sort of. As you may know, style revivals are cyclical. And just how people in the 1970s were getting tired of modernism, over the past few years, people have been getting tired of mid-century modern and the Scandinavian look. And whether it's intentional or not, some people are definitely looking to postmodernism to switch things up a little. This new postmodern we're seeing today echoes some of the things we were seeing in the Memphis Design Group, as it still favors bold sculptural shapes, but the colors are more muted and the shapes are softer. In today's postmodern, there are still bold moments for sure, but it's just like less screamy and less everything needs to make a statement all the time. And it's all just better integrated, if that makes sense. At the time of filming this video, we're just coming out of a global pandemic. So most people are looking for spaces that are comforting and inviting and not necessarily that attack all your senses when you walk into a room. Essentially, we've got a more toned down version of postmodern that's more relaxed and a little less loud. Some contemporary postmodern materials that you could introduce into your space would be brass, terrazzo, plaster, burlwood, travertine, colored glass and plastics. The original Memphis palette was inspired by the colors seen in pop art and Mondrian's paintings. However, the way postmodern color is being used today usually skews a little bit more neutral and warm. Then again, in commercial spaces where, you know, they're trying to make an impact and create Instagrammable spaces, it's not unusual to see pretty bold colors being used. So you can go bold if that's your thing. You can go warm neutral, which is more reminiscent of the 70s. You can go pastel, which is more classic 80s. Or you could even incorporate neon accents if you're feeling daring, which would be a very postmodern thing to do. You decide. The way we're using postmodern furniture today is a really interesting combination. On the one hand, we've got this chubby, blobby, pool noodle-esque type furniture from the 70s. But on the other hand, we've got these very basic geometric shapes, which come from the 80s. And if you think you're seeing some art deco in there, you're right. A lot of what was influencing design in the 80s was actually coming from the Art Deco movement from the 1920s and 30s. 
With 2020's Postmodern, what we're looking at is essentially a delicate combination of organic, raw shapes and materials, juxtaposed with harder, sleeker materials and geometric shapes. If you're shopping for postmodern furniture, some things you can look for are furniture with chunky profiles, pedestal tables, low coffee tables with short legs, rounded seating, waterfall shaped furniture, tubular and spherical shapes, fluted finishes and items made of stone. This lamp is really a great example of what the new postmodern looks like in an actual object. This lamp was designed in 2018 by Annie Lee Parker. Marcel Bruyer designed this gorgeous cantilevered chair back in 1928. Then the chair had a revival in the late 70s, and now because 70s and 80s is back, these chairs are stylish yet again. Fun fact, this chair was originally known as the B32 but the chair was later renamed after Breuer's daughter, Francesca, who was nicknamed Cesca. So I don't know this for certain, but I think that this chair is actually pronounced the Cesca chair and not the Cesca, which is how everyone pronounces it now. Fascinating, I know. The Camaleonda sofa was designed by Mario Bellini originally in the 1970s. Then it was discontinued and then re-released again in 2019. It's a modular sofa that can be combined in an infinite number of ways. To me, it kind of looks like bubble wrap covered in velvet. Apparently it's comfortable. This Jabba the Hutt type sofa was designed by Michel Ducaroy in 1973. Togo sofas are still being manufactured and come in a few different sizes. This lamp was designed in about 1971 by Mads Caprani. Pleated lampshades are definitely a trend right now, and now you know where this trend is coming from. This wavy acrylic pink mirror doubles as a lamp as it lights up from within with a pink neon light. This iconic postmodern piece was designed by none other than Ettore Sotsas himself. This mirror has become the ultimate selfie mirror due to its flattering pink glow. An original costs upwards of $10,000. Original 70s Murano glass mushroom lamps sell for several hundreds of dollars, sometimes more. Luckily, if you're into these shroom lamps, it's possible to find some pretty great affordable dupes online. For example, check out the Ansel lamp from Urban Outfitters. It's pretty spot on. Kind of like with mid-century modern, when you're shopping for post-modern, there's basically two options. You can go for originals or you can buy what's being manufactured today. Obviously, if you want authenticity, go for originals. These are pieces that you can still absolutely find at your local thrift store, estate sales, and garage sales. I've definitely gotten lucky that way. However, these items are becoming very sought after, so it's becoming a little more difficult to find them. I recommend shopping Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and your local thrift stores if you want deals. You can also shop vintage dealers. For example, there are a lot on Instagram, um, and there's a lot on Etsy as well. And lastly, you can shop Pomono, Cherish, and First Dibs if you've got the funds. Cherish and First Dibs are the sites where most A-list designers source vintage online, but obviously they usually have large budgets to work with. Even if you're not directly buying off these sites, referencing these websites is really useful if you're looking to price check when you're buying something locally. Shopping vintage is great, but you don't always find what you want, and sometimes it's really expensive. So what do you do? Well, some large retailers have definitely caught onto this trend, so you can find several contemporary pieces that have that 80s feel to them. Some retailers that I would recommend checking out for postmodern inspired pieces are CB2, Urban Outfitters, Crate and Barrel, West Elm, Anthropology, and Lulu and Georgia. And I think as time passes, we'll definitely see more retailers jump on board as they kind of clue into what's going on and respond to consumer demand. I think there are a couple of key things to keep in mind when you're decorating postmodern in the 2020s. And the first one is to not overdo it. I definitely wouldn't go all in with this style, but then again, I wouldn't recommend going all in with any style because I feel like then it becomes too themey and chances are you might get tired of it. And the second thing to remember is that some postmodern materials are quite hard and cold. So if you're going the chubby furniture route, I think that'll help counter this problem a lot. But if not, definitely don't forget to soften the hard, chunky sculptural stuff with other natural, warmer materials. When it comes to color, my preference is always a neutral base. But if you wanna like embrace pastels or bold hues, 
Um, you can, but I would recommend not mixing a lot of colors, at least not at first. Get a sense of whether or not you actually like the style first. If you decide to use pattern, I wouldn't necessarily go with the traditional 80s patterns, but graphic patterns can work well with this style. So, you know, try introducing like bold stripes, grids, or checkers or maybe a paired back squiggle or a wave for some movement. What I think is really cool about Postmodern is that the pieces are actually very versatile. You can pair it with boho, mid-century, Scandinavian, traditional. You can go minimalist with it, you can go maximalist. Whatever your style is, or maybe you don't even have one, don't be afraid to experiment. Just start with a couple of pieces and go from there. So hopefully by now, on some level, you already have a sense of whether or not postmodern is for you. And trust me, it is not for everyone. But that's the beauty of design. There's so many styles in this day and age. All that really matters is whether you love it and whether it makes you happy. There is no right or wrong. Personally, even though I don't love all the pieces, I definitely love this more up-to-date version of the 70s, 80s aesthetic. I personally feel like this style revival is quite exciting after so many years of mid-century modern, everything, and Scandinavian. And again, those two styles have such similarities. It just feels like that's all we've been seeing for such a long time. It definitely may be a bit of nostalgia for me because I was born in the early 80s. And not to generalize too much here, but I feel like people that are like 40 years old and younger might be a little more receptive to these shapes because it's like the first time they're really seeing them whereas people that are like 40 plus already lived through the 80s once so they might still have a bit of PTSD and they just don't want to go there ever again. So my theory about postmodern is that more and more of what we'll be seeing, you know, on Instagram, available to buy in stores, will be affected by this trend. But I'm always curious to hear what you think. Do you think this style will stick around for the duration of this decade or do you think it's just gonna die out? Leave me a comment. I do hope you found this video useful and if you like these deep dive type videos, then definitely check out my other ones. Thanks for watching, bye.